guys, it's Erin. Happily we go with another Strump and Sensel design team project. And remember I told you I was so excited to get the Mini Molly flowery set? Look at these. Aren't these gorgeous? There's going to be so many projects you can do with these. And I'm going to show you one today. So we're going back to my square journal here and we're going to take some of this preserved papers. It's a really pretty set. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. Um, but it has these pretty flowers and kind of like a vintage writing on it. So I'm just going to rip it out here. And then the other side has old writing on it. And we're going to use that too. So I'm just going to rip up my pieces and we're going to collage them down with some matte medium. I'm going to squeeze it on. I'm almost out. I need another one. And we'll put it on with my finger because you know me. That's how I roll. And then we're going to put matte medium over the top of this and I'm going to use this Art Basics. It's kind of like a squeegee sort of palette knife thing. Um, I'm not really sure the name of it, but if you were watching this from my YouTube channel, I will put everything that I used today's project down in the description box below. So once that's dry, I'm going to take some Lucas. It's just some white acrylic paint. You can use any acrylic paint or you could even use gesso. And I'm going to take a little brayer here and just brayer it all over the top. Just get it on kind of these little nooks and crannies here. And then I decided I didn't like that white spot there, so I'm just gonna take another little piece here and rip it off and glue that down over top of that spot. and then make sure it's dry. So we're gonna have some sepia golden, um, this is the fluid liquid acrylics, and just spray on some water. Isn't that just gorgeous? Oh, I love it. It's like instant antiquing, instant dyeing. And I'm gonna use my finger and kind of smudge it around just to get a couple little areas here and spray a little bit more to get some more drippies down below and shake it off. Then of course, dry that up. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that CP of a paint, it's so pretty. So we're going to take one of the stencils here and I decided I wanted to try, I've never tried it before, but we're gonna take some crackle paste and this is the Deco Arts crackle paste and we're gonna use it kind of like a texture paste through the stencil. So I'm just gonna take a little mini palette knife here and push it through. I'm not being too careful, making sure that it's perfect, but I just wanna make sure all of the petals have a bit of the crackle in it. And if you've never used crackle medium before, the thicker you put it on, the bigger your cracks will be, um, and the thinner than the, um, obviously, the smaller your cracks will be. So we're just gonna grab, I'm gonna take another stencil here, and we're gonna use this little rose. And I'm kind of holding it up to the side so I don't smush down the other part. And if it smushes a little bit, meh, whatever. It's, you know, it's gonna be a vintage page, so we'll work, we'll work with it. And we'll add some leaves here and I'm just going to continue stenciling until I feel like I have enough on the page. I just want them to be sort of down in the right hand corner. And now I'm going to, actually I'm off camera here, but I'm wiping down that stencil because I want to do it on the opposite side. And I'm just flipping the stencil over so that way the little leaves go the opposite direction. a little cleanup with my fingernail and then there's tons of the paste left so I'm flipping the stencil over and just gonna dab it all over the page waste not want not right and then I'll take my palette knife here and just add some in a couple extra places just sort of wherever I feel like I kind of want to have some crackle on the page spread it around and then you could dry this with a heat tool but in my experience I haven't gotten very good cracks with that. The best way is just to let it set overnight. So that's what we're gonna do. And here is the next day. 
Look at those cracks. Isn't that awesome? I'm pretty excited about this, you guys. So now we're gonna break out some inks. I've got some Dilutions and some Lindy Stamp Gang inks here, and we're gonna spray the flowers. I was thinking I'd do, you know, kind of like pinks and reds for the roses, and maybe make those sort of like yellow daisies. And we're just gonna play. And if you get some overspray, just take a paper towel and kind of dab it up. It's not gonna totally color in the uh, flower, but it'll give it a little bit of color and that's kind of what we want. And this is another reason why we um, matte mediumed over top of the, the paper underneath. So that way these sprays wouldn't just soak into the paper. They'd kind of sit on top and give me some time to clean it up so we're not just gonna like have you know, green blobs and red and yellow blobs all over the page. I do like a little bit of the color. You can see some of it there. And then go ahead and dry that up. I wanted to deepen the color a bit, so I'm grabbing some watercolors here. And then we're just gonna take a water brush and watercolor over the top of these. They sort of resist where the crackle is. I'm not sure what's in the paste, but it's not porous. It doesn't seem like to me anyways. Um, but it's still gonna give us some color. So just kind of dab it on, let it stay there. And then when you feel like you've got it good, we'll dry it up. with the watercolors we're going to pull in another one of my favorites charcoal powder I love this stuff we're gonna take a brush and it you could even just throw it on there it is super messy I love messy art I don't know if you've seen any of my other stuff but messy is um, my thing I, it's fun so I'm just going to spread this all over the page and it might seem kind of frightening at first because you're like what are you doing but grab a piece of paper and then we will dab off the extras and then save that put it back in the bin so you don't waste it not that it's expensive but you know still and then we're going to take just a regular paintbrush here it's kind of like a painter's brush it's a little bit stiffer not too stiff and brush some of that off you can you can work it harder in areas to bring back more of the color or you could leave it darker in some areas now this rose down here I'm not sure what happened maybe it wasn't fully dry or what but it took on a lot of the charcoal powder and that's okay I have a kneaded eraser here and here's another little trick you can kind of pull it up rub it around and it will pull up the charcoal powder and still some of the reds not showing through so I may fix that and to fix it I'm just gonna grab that water brush and dab a little bit of that off and maybe dab a couple other areas and then I have um, another spray here this is a deeper red one from Dilutions and same water brush just kind of brush it around and then dab it off and now I'm gonna add a little bit more of the powder there I wasn't even waiting for it to dry we're just gonna roll with it I'm not gonna be too futzy with it now the thing that I love most about the the charcoal powder is look it gets into the cracks of the crackle and it deepens it so that way you can really see the cracks now I'm going to take a distressed crayon this is black soot and I'm going to grunge it up a bit more just go around the outside and smudge with my finger if you aren't getting the smudges that you want you can add a little bit of water to your finger and that will help but I'm liking how it's uh, deep in some areas of the smudge and then looser in other areas if that makes sense I'm digging that look then I'm gonna add, uh, that was too white for me, so I'm just taking a little bit more of that sepia and dabbing it with a paper towel. And I love the patterning that paper towels give with just the paint just dabbing. Look at all those dots, isn't that so cool? So dry that, and once it's dry, I'm just gonna take a little marker here, I think it's a Sharpie pen, and just do a little bit of a border, kind of real super messy around the outside, because I love to have borders on my art. It gives it more of like a uh, finished 
look. I've got a piece of old pattern paper, a piece of stickable canvas, and some thread. And now I just want to kind of go around the edges of this with my finger and rough it up. I don't want it to look like it was freshly cut because we want that kind of vintage look. And I don't like that dark color, so I'm going to, I have a little bit more of that charcoal powder. I'm gonna rub it in the charcoal powder, rub it along with my hand, and take a brush and just kind of grunge it up. Look, it doesn't that look like it's fitting for the page now? So we'll grab some Uhu glue stick and glue everything down. We'll put that there. I'm not being real particular with how I glue it down. And then I just sort of want that to be um, between the flowers there. Unpeel the backing and stick it down. And then just sort of gather your thread like it's a little baby nest and stick it there. And then I have these sentiment stickers from Tim Holtz. I'm just gonna grab one, Collector of Memories, and I'm going to stick it over top of the thread to hold the thread down. And just make sure you press real hard. I don't know why I decided to use a smudger around it because it's not smudging anything at all. But now I'm just taking my finger and roughing it a little bit more. And then I wanted to use some gold leaf because you know you gotta have some gold leaf on a page. So I just take the glue stick, dab it a couple areas, grab some of the gold leaf on my finger and just sort of stick it kind of, I'm trying to remember where I even put the glue stick now, but I think it's up in that corner and just sort of stick it down. Add a couple more little dots here and there just to give it a little bit of a sparkle feel. And then I'm gonna take a gel pen here and just kind of go on the corners of the sentiment. It's not gonna do a whole lot, but it will help make it pop just a little bit. And that is going to finish up our page, you guys. I'm gonna grab a stencil brush and just go over top of that gold leaf to kind of break it up a little bit. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to check out Sarah's stencils over at strumpetstencils.com and pick up yourself some of these awesome flowery Molly stencils. Until next time, happy creating.